Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself. My name is Chris and in this tutorial series we will be covering the Java programming language. If you found your way to this video, you are either already a seasoned Java programmer who has fought countless battles on the fields of coding land, or just a humble beginner who hasn't written a single line of code. So if you are just here to review a few topics or want to learn Java from the ground up, you have come to the right place. These tutorials will also be useful to me because they will force me to commit myself more to the language so I can give you guys as good and as accurate content as possible. I don't claim to be an expert by any means, so if you feel like I've made a mistake or there's a better solution to a problem than the one that I'm presenting, feel free to let me know and I'll have a look into it. Let's make this a learning experience for everybody. But before we get ourselves dirty, <laughs> that's great, but before we get our hands dirty, let's answer a few questions first. Now don't worry, it will be quick. I just want to give you a rough idea of what you're getting yourself into. So, what is Java? And why is it so popular? Java is an object-oriented programming language. If you've never heard of this concept before, don't worry about it, we'll cover it in more detail later. For now it's enough to think of it as building blocks that you can design. Each block holds a variety of data and functionality, and in most cases is used to perform one single task within your program. A really nice feature about Java is its internal garbage collector. This relieves the program of having to deal with memory management manually. So this makes Java easier to pick up for beginners in similar languages like C++ for instance. The last thing I'm going to address is Java's cross-platform ability. As long as you've got Java installed in your computer, it is almost always guaranteed that Java applications are going to run on your machine. I know this was a really rough description of Java, but I didn't want to overwhelm you guys with too much info just yet. But enough of me rambling. Let's finally do something. This is the part where you come in. So listen up. We are going to download and install the necessary tools to write Java applications. And then we are going to write a simple program to test if everything works. So open up your favorite web browser, go to google.com and get ready to type. What we need to develop Java applications is a Java development kit, or JDK for short. So go ahead and type JDK download. And the first link should get you right there. Now we are on oracle.com and what we want is a Java SE, which stands for Standard Edition, so make sure you get that. Now click on Java Platform Download and scroll down to the appropriate version for your operating system. Also be sure to accept the license agreement up here. Now I'm not going to download and install this because I've got it already and I'm pretty confident in you guys that you know how to install programs on your machine. We are almost there. The last thing we need is an IDE or Integrated Development Environment. IDEs are pretty handy tools because they allow you to write and manage code pretty easily and usually already have an inbuilt debugger and compiler. This makes life a lot easier. I mean, you could just be hardcore and write everything in a text editor and compile it yourself, but why would you want to do that? The IDE that I like to use is Eclipse, so head over to eclipse.org and download it there. Go over here and click Download Eclipse. And we want Eclipse Standard Edition. Um, now over here you can choose your operating system and your architecture. And again just download it and install it. I'm pretty sure you guys know how to do this. Once you've finished installing it, open up Eclipse. You will be prompted to choose a workspace, which is a directory where all your files are going to be stored. So just choose whatever place you like and click on OK. Then you will be greeted by this welcome screen here. Now it might be a good idea to check these out if you want to get more familiar with Eclipse but I'm going to cover the most basic and important features in these tutorials anyway. So to leave the screen just go up here and click on Workbench and then you will get to this sort of main screen. Now we are almost there. I know you can already smell the code. But before we start coding, I'd like you to change a few settings first. Now this is completely optional, but I feel like this improves the coding experience by a lot. So just go up here on Window and click on Preferences. And then under the General tab, go to Editors open that one up and go to text editors and make sure that show line numbers here is checked. Once you've taken care of that, go down to the Java tab, go to code style and click on formatter. Now here you can choose a profile which determines how your code is going to be formatted. Now this applies to automatically generated code and to autocode completion. So I'm just going to work through this real quick and set up a profile which makes for easy code readability. So just go up here and click on new and decide on a name for your profile and then hit OK. Then move this down so you can see something and I'll <coughs> I mostly leave everything as is here but for the braces tab 
I like to choose a different setting. As you can see, everything is set up to be on the same line, so let me change that real quick. I set everything to be on the next line, except for the array initializer down here. I kept that on the same line. Again, this is completely optional, and you can choose whatever you want. I just feel like this is a really good setup. So once you're done here, you can go uh, and hit OK. Hit OK again. And now we're finally ready to write some code. Are you excited? You should be. The first thing we need to do is create a project. So go up here on File, New, Java Project, and choose a name for your project. Now you can call it whatever you want, so I'm just going to be really creative here and call this tutorial. You can leave the settings as they are, you don't really have to change anything. Just go, <coughs> just go and click on Finish. And then you can see it pop up in your Package Explorer. Now if you're really adventurous, you can go and open this up, and you see an empty SRC folder, which is the place where all your source code files are going to go and the system library, which we really don't want to tamper with. So to finally be able to write some code, we need a class. And in order to create one, you can either go here to this symbol, New Java class, or once again head over to File, New, Class. Now again, this needs to be named, and for the first few tutorials, it doesn't really matter what you call it. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this main. Now if you don't want to be confused, make sure you click this first item here, Public Static Void Main. It's important, so don't forget it. Okay? Okay. Once you're done here, click on Finish. And ta-da! We've got some code. Now don't be confused by all this. If you if you have no idea what's going on, just don't worry about it. We'll cover this in the next tutorial. For now, we just want to go under the second block right here and type system.out.println open parentheses and in quotations you write hello world. Make sure to close it with another parenthesis and end the line with a semicolon. Now it's time for the moment of truth. If you're ready to check if your JDK installed correctly, go up here to this play symbol and click on run main. Now if you've got a fresh installation of Eclipse going on, it's going to ask you if you want to save your file. Just click OK there. So just click this and you've got hello world down in your console and congratulations! You're well on the way to becoming a code slinging master. But alas, this is all for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, feel free to subscribe to never miss out on new videos. I promise we will get into the meat of things next time. See you then!